Okay, so this, uh, this video is going to talk about the integrals um, with dealing with inverse trig functions. And this whole section is kind of building upon itself. We first started with the derivatives of these inverse trig functions, uh, and we proved those. So you know those are good, and then we did a few examples. We also know that if we have the derivatives, then we can work backwards into the antiderivative or the integral. So what I have up here are strictly uh, the integrals from the derivatives that we discussed. And it's pretty clear that from this setup right here, that this integral would be in fact your inverse sine of x and then plus c. Similar for that second one, we would have the inverse tan of x plus c, very recognizable from uh, its derivative. And then the third one, you'll note that it's missing the absolute value on the x, but whenever you come up with the integral itself, the absolute value is going to be placed upon the x for the inverse secant. Uh, this logic that, that allows for this is very similar to the derivative when we worked with the natural log of x versus the natural log of the absolute value of x. And then we transition into the integral as well. Um, and so uh, losing the absolute value bars here and then placing them over here. Now, again, those are very specific um, integrals from the derivatives. We know, though, that chain rules can come into play a lot of times, in which case we would need to generalize uh, quite a bit. And so to generalize this, we'll talk about using u's and a's, okay? So over here, I'm going to go ahead and, and use the integral of 1 over the square root of a squared minus u squared du, okay? Now, the reason why this is a couple of things are important here. Um, again, we know that chain rules will exist. Anytime you're dealing with undoing a chain rule with an antiderivative, that's going to be where your u sub comes into play. And so we, we, when we write it like this, we're integrating with respect to u. So this guy here, this is what we're integrating with respect to. A would be our constant in this. And you can see it's kind of the same way. That's what we're integrating with respect to. And this is our constant, okay? Doesn't have to be one, uh, it just has to be a constant. And we'll talk about what happens as we look at a few examples. Um, this then turns into the inverse sine of u over a plus c. Similar for the second one, if we take an a squared plus u squared du, that's going to be 1 over a inverse tan of u over a plus c. And then finally, this 1 over u square root of u squared minus a squared du would be a 1 over a inverse secant of the absolute value of u over a plus c. Now, Again, a lot of this relates very clearly, other parts of it very not clearly, okay? Uh, and so we're actually gonna prove this one uh, momentarily, uh, but I do again just wanna point out, um, the u is what we're integrating with respect to, so those a's would be constants. Um, if this a were to be one, you can see it wouldn't really affect the outcome any differently than it did over here, okay? So we're gonna, uh, well, I'm gonna go ahead and clear the screen real quick and then, uh, I'll go ahead and we'll prove this one together, and then I'm sure that once we prove this one, the others will uh, be a little more convincing. Okay, so we'll go ahead and prove this uh, inverse secant one. Um, and when I say prove, essentially I'm just going to work it out and show you that the result is, in fact, uh, what I had up on the screen a moment ago. Now, to do this, uh, what we're going to do is, again, take advantage of something that we learned a few minutes ago and, 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 and are convinced that it's correct. Uh, so I'm going to actually multiply top and bottom by 1 over root a squared. Now you might be thinking, well, why in the world are you doing that? Well, I'm doing that so that I can create my constant of 1. If I can create my constant of 1, then I've really reduced this down uh, significantly, and I've only got a little further to go. So when I do this, <clears throat> we know that this 1 over uh, root a squared is going to be 1 over a. So I'm going to pull this 1 over a out to the front. So I've got a 1 over a. And then when I take this 1 over a squared and I go into this guy, my u is going to be left alone and I'm going to have the square root of u squared minus a squared over root a squared. Okay, so all I did is I took this guy and I multiplied it right underneath there. Okay, 
So now when it divides into it, as it will, we can remember we can combine this under one big radical. So when we combine that and divide each into each other, we'll have a one over a integral, one over u, big square root, u over a squared minus one, followed by my du. I have my du up here as well. Okay, <clears throat> so now, remember, we're trying to take advantage of something we learned a minute ago that we're convinced is correct. So at this stage, I'm going to let an x equal u over a. If I let x equal u over a, and if you're questioning again why I'm doing that, think back to the derivative that we talked about a few minutes ago. It had a 1 here, which we're good with now, but it also had an x here. So that's why I'm letting my substitution be what it is. If we let x equal u over a, then u equals ax and du equals a dx. So let me go ahead and substitute some stuff in now. The u value right here is going to be replaced with an ax. And then the square root right there is going to now be an x squared minus 1. So I replace the u over a with the x. And then my du is going to be replaced by an a dx. And so we're almost there. You'll note that this a and this a go away. And so when all said and done, I'm looking at 1 over a integral 1 over x root x squared minus 1 dx. And we just talked a little while ago that from the derivative, we know that that thing there is the inverse secant of the absolute value of x plus c. But we can't forget we now have this 1 over a out in front. And we also can't forget we didn't start in x's. We started in u's. So now I'm going to substitute back where my x equals u over a. So if I bring this now full circle, I get 1 over a inverse secant of the absolute value of u over a plus c. So now, hopefully, if you were convinced the derivative was right, and then you're convinced that a derivative and an antiderivative are opposites, hopefully now you're convinced, having worked through this, the general form also supports that idea. Okay, so let's take a look at a, a specific example now. When it comes to these integrals, um, it's all going to be about recognition. Um, when you see an integral like this, um, you know, in Calc 1, it was always, can you integrate it directly? Can you manipulate it? Or uh, was it going to be a u sub? Um, and I would encourage you to go through that same thought process on all of the integrals. Um, but now we're also going to be introducing these new ideas and where it's going to be uh, another kind of checklist you need to incorporate. What does it represent? What does it kind of look like it might do? And in this case, it, it's very pretty clear with this this x and this root something squared minus something, we're hopefully going to be uh, going down the inverse secant road. And if that's the case, I want to get this set up a little bit uh, more precisely. Uh, I'm going to call this the integral 1 over x, and then I've got a square root here. And so hopefully everybody will agree that what I have written is the exact same thing. All right. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is actually twofold. One of them is chances are we're going to need a substitution uh, because this isn't just an x. This is a 2x. Um, the other thing is I want to make sure that, that when, I, when all said and done, uh, I'm able to really understand what my u's are, what my a's are, what my dx is, what my du is, all that stuff. And so by writing it like this, it's going to give me an advantage. So when I write it like this, I can see my u is going to be 2x. I can see my a value is going to be the square root of 7. My du is going to be 2 dx, which means that 1 half du equals dx. Okay, so let's take this now to our advantage and rewrite this integral. So I'm going to have 1 over my x value, as you can see from here, my x would be u over 2. So I've got a u over 2, a square root now of u squared minus root 7 squared with a dx of 1 half du. And so now, 
this one half and this one half go away and we're to the general form now of 1 over u root u squared minus square root of 7 squared du. So now it's a perfect fit for our, uh, our formula we came up with just a moment ago. Our formula started 1 over a, 1 over a, so 1 over root 7, inverse secant of the absolute value of u over a plus c, and then when we substitute back in to our x's, our u was 2x, and then we have over our square root of 7 plus c. So there is that integral. Not a whole lot of work really needed to be done here. Um, it's all about recognition. If you can recognize that we're, we're approaching an inverse secant integral, then at that point, rewriting it and understanding this blue and red information right here is going to make the world a difference in, in being able to push through these integrals. All right, so now in this example, we're dealing with a definite integral. Um, so, again, I always encourage you to think easy before you really think uh, that you're going to have to reinvent the wheel here. Um, so if you look really deep into this, you can hopefully see an inverse sign starting to show itself. Now, once again, I'd probably go ahead and rewrite it. I'll keep those bounds on there. And then this is e to the negative x over the square root of 1 minus e to the negative x squared dx. Okay? Now, just like the last one, um, we're going to have to do a u sub for this because it is something different than just x, but it turns out that our a value is 1 in this particular case. So my u would be e to the negative x, which conveniently now gives us a substitution for that numerator that we wanted. We're just going to need to carry this additional negative now. So now we'll have a negative integral. 1 over root 1 minus u squared du. So that one fell apart really fast if we're, if we're, if we're uh, on top of catching that it's going to be that inverse sign and picking things wisely. Um, so the other thing I want to make sure of is I don't want to copy these numbers down here and here because these are x's, right? These numbers are x's. We need to be u's. Uh, but I would go ahead and I would just plug in this natural log right here. Maybe I'll do one of them with you guys here. So if we take e to the negative natural log of 2 over root 3, remember this negative can come up. And so the e and the natural log will do away with one another, and we'll just have this root 3 over 2 since the negative exponent would flip that. So that's going to then be a root 3 over 2. And similar for that bottom one, that's just going to give us a 1 half. Okay? So now um, we've got our inverse sign, which is going to be our negative there. That negative is from there. And then we've got our inverse sign of u evaluated at root 3 over 2 and 1 half. So when you evaluate this using the fundamental theorem of calculus, uh, you end up with a negative pi over 6. Okay, so nothing too, too exciting when it comes to um, going from here to here. Um, except something that I didn't mention. When I, when I look at these inverse trig functions, there's generally three of them that I feel really, really comfortable with. The inverse sine, the inverse tangent, and the inverse secant. If you're good with those, remember you're good with the other three. But if I think about this a little differently, let's suppose I scratch that out and put that negative right there. Well, now all of a sudden, what uh, inverse trig function is this integral going to go to? Well, it's going to go to the inverse cosine, right? Which is kind of cool. And I, I picked this one because it's a definite integral. Uh, so I would encourage you as well to do the inverse cosine of u evaluated uh, root 3 over 2 to 1 half. And you should still come up with that same pi over 6. Uh, so it's, it's really kind of cool how, how those two things uh, re are related in this particular idea uh, and how we can choose one over the other just depending upon your, uh, your uh, preference. 
All right, so for this one, uh, when we look at it, if it's in this section, it's probably pretty easy to tell that it's going to be an inverse tan because it doesn't have the, the square root. Um, but if it's not in this section, it's all mixed together with uh, any number of integrals that we've studied in the course so far and what we will study moving forward. This is not obvious, okay? Um, but that being said, we're kind of at a loss for what we might do, okay? It's not a direct integration. You can't really manipulate this. Um, we really don't have any options here other than to rewrite that bottom into something else and hope for the best. So what I'm going to do is actually take this denominator right here. I'd move over to the side, 4x squared plus 4x plus 2, and I would complete the square. When you take that thing and you complete the square, which is a very, very common technique in these types of problems, guys, you end up with 1 plus 2x plus 1 squared dx. And the moment you complete the square, all of a sudden now it screams at you it's going to be the inverse tan function. Okay? So for that inverse tan, we know we can see that this guy, since it's not just an x, we're going to have to do a u sub for it all. So u would equal 2x plus 1. du would equal 2 dx. So with that one little move, now we have a 1 half integral, 1 over 1 plus u squared du. So keep in mind, guys, this uh, uh, trinomial here, kind of just in the way, not really helping us in any way, can always be rewritten by completing the square. Uh, so by doing that, it really falls apart fast. Okay? Uh, so here, when we continue down, this is going to be str uh, directly the inverse tan of u over a plus c. And then let me backtrack just a second. Remember, this is technically a 1 over a. Our a value in this case is 1. So the, this 1 half is this 1 half. Then we have our 1 over a inverse tan u over a plus c. So final answer then would be a 1 half inverse tan of 2x plus 1 plus c for this one.